The environmental campaign group Insulate Britain have caused weeks of controversy by blocking roads to gain attention for their demands. It's fair to say, while their demand that the government should pay to insulate homes is popular, their methods aren't. Much of the critique, the complaints about Insulate Britain are reasonable, just motorists who want to get to their destination, slightly annoyed about traffic jams. It's not fine, however, to use a traffic jam or non-violent direct action as an argument for fascism. This was a moment from Channel 5's Jeremy Vine show this morning. The problem in this country, in all areas, is that minorities always get the upper hand because we're so tolerant. And minorities have to be squashed like that. That was Mike Parry speaking. He's an ex-Sun supporter. Um, That clip has been viewed over a million times on Twitter. Um, it It was shared many times, I think, because people thought he was talking about ethnic minorities. And one user tagged Jeremy Vine asking how it was acceptable to let that go out on air. This is what Jeremy Vine tweeted in response. This would have been totally unacceptable had Mike been referring to members of ethnic minorities. In fact, this snippet does not make clear Mike Parry was actually talking about the eco-protesters who brought the M25 to a halt. He said they represented very few people in the UK. Jeremy Vine has now deleted that tweet. We would like to show you the full clip with the fuller context of that intervention. Unfortunately, the Jeremy Vine show haven't made the episode available online just yet. Um, We can't explain why. Um, I'm going to get Aaron's thoughts on this in one moment. First of all, let's just show you the clip one more time. Now you know the context provided by Jeremy Vine. The problem in this country, in all areas, is that minorities always get the upper hand because we're so tolerant. And minorities have to be squashed like that. Minorities have to be squashed. Aaron, um, obviously that would have been more shocking if he'd been talking about ethnic minorities or sexual minorities. Is it fine, though, to say you'll squash minorities when minorities are people who have particular political beliefs instead of, you know, immutable characteristics? Well, in a, in a democratic free society, Michael, minorities' rights should be protected. And that doesn't just mean ethnic minorities or religious minorities or linguistic minorities or women or LGBT people. It also means people who hold minority political views, which are, of course, uh, still congruent with democratic values. So, for instance, um, most people aren't Republicans in this country. They want to keep the monarchy. But that doesn't mean just because Republicans such as myself are minority, that doesn't mean people have permission to go around beating us up. Uh, because minority rights when it comes to freedom of political conscience, freedom of expression, uh, freedom of association is really important. Once upon a time, the idea that women should have the vote was a minority view. Who knows what will be a majority view in, in 50, 100 years' time? And we know that the, 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 the train tracks upon which the locomotive of historical progress, if it does exist at all, uh, they are the idea that perhaps the minority is right or perhaps the minority have something to teach the rest of us. That's a very basic point. And, and, and what I found very strange about Jeremy, Jeremy Vine's initial response is to say, oh, he just means political minorities, as if political minorities have never been subject to violence and murder and intimidation. Very strange thing to say. If you want to defend a free society, you don't think or say that. Secondly, he was clearly referring to all minorities because he said, I think the exact words, Michael, maybe you can, again, get. we want to get it right down. He said in all instances or something to that effect. He's talking about minorities. Minorities are the problem. Political minorities, racial minorities, minority views, uh, people who are uppity, who might want to change things, who think the status quo isn't perfect. Very, very, very dangerous thing to say. There's a reason why the other guest on the show, I've I think it was Yasmin Ali by Brown. Like you say, Michael, nobody can find this show online. I wonder why. Said instantly, almost like a reflex. Oh my God. I think most people watching that or listening to this show probably felt the same way. It is fascism. And the fact that Jeremy Vine uh, made an apology for it or rather excused it, uh, it, it is unacceptable. And I think for somebody like Jeremy Vine, who look, he has Ash Sarker on, he has Owen Jones on, and he has people from the right, like Carol Malone on as well, right? They want good television. And they would say, well, people from the right, you might not agree with them, but they reflect a segment of public opinion. That's a fair argument. What this man is saying is something quite distinct, however. What he's saying is at odds with the very foundation upon which a a free society rests. That can't be allowed on television broadcast without significant scrutiny and accountability for the programmers and for the host. 
And I do find it remarkable that after the fact, on social media, somebody as, in, as intelligent as Jeremy Vine, who is as, who is as uh, politically experienced when it comes to the fallout of these kinds of things on broadcast TV or radio, it happens, it's live media after all, would say that. And I do think it says something quite dangerous about how, how toxic our media environment is. I don't think he agrees with the point, but he would say, well, he has a right to say that. No, I don't think he has a right to say that, actually. I don't think anybody has a right to say that minority should be crushed. No, that's not how it works. Because if you start permitting people to say that on live television, very quickly, we're going to lose some of the most sacred things we hold dear in our society. The other thing that sort of shocked me about it, and I suppose why it is just so congruent with classic far-right tropes, is this idea that minorities have the upper hand. Now, obviously, the classic... Um, sort of version of this is anti-Semitism. Um, you'll also get it with sort of white replacement theory where you have ethnic minorities who are now determining policy and determining who can say what and who can't say what and ultimately their intent on becoming a majority. You know, classic far-right conspiracy theories. But they're also, I mean, they're also paranoid. And I think this, this clip just shows how ridiculous that is. You know, this is a guy who was you know, a reporter at The Sun, he's often on television, you know, standard right-wing talking head, who thinks that the insulate Britain activists have got the upper hand, right? <laughs> the insulate Britain activists are the new people with power in this country who need to be crushed. Now, you might find a few traffic jams annoying. As I say, I think it's perfectly reasonable to find a few traffic jams annoying. Some people will say it's legitimate because it's such a serious um, issue, such a serious issue, climate change, that all, 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 all peaceful action is justified. This is certainly a pe peaceful action. Others will say, actually, it's self-defeating. It's also kind of annoying and it's a bit undemocratic um, to, to put your demands forward in, in those ways. Now, I don't want to weigh in on either of those um, arguments. What I do think it's safe to say is... <laughs> This, this group of people going out in the middle of motorways to say home should be insulated, they do not have the upper hand. They are not controlling politics in this country. And anyone who thinks they are is just completely deluded or completely disingenuous. I, I don't know which one you think it is of, of those, Aaron. Do you think this guy is really terrified that Insulate Britain have got the upper hand or is this just you know cynical politicking? Oh, no, I think he really believes it. I mean, a, a key part of modern fascism, Michael, or fascism generally, is the idea that we're in the majority, but we're also the victims. You know, somehow the minorities have got us under the thumb, whether it's uh, people with disabilities, whether it's Jewish people, whether it's socialists, whether it's students, whether it's people on benefits, all these, uh, all these minorities are somehow exploiting the, you know, the majority, which actually isn't really a majority because, you know, we're talking about a lot of people here, but it's this, this idealized notion of the person who keeps the country ticking over, the middle-aged white man, I'm the taxpayer, I'm the one that adds to the pot, I'm the one that gives the surplus, they're the ones who are in deficit, I give, they take, I'm the uh, striver, they're the skiver, that kind of discourse. And I, so I think he does believe it. I think if you've worked at the Sun for that long, uh, I think clearly, uh, you're going to internalize those ideas. And it's, 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 it's become the norm now in, in British politics, Michael, over the last 20, 25 years. I mean, look, it's called the Jeremy Vine Show, but you know what it reminded me of? Another Jeremy, Jeremy Kyle. Mm. A lot of current affairs and, and political coverage and political conversation in this country now looks like Jeremy Kyle 10, 15 years ago. And people will say, well, you don't want the guy on there. You're calling him far right. Well, the far left shouldn't go on either. Well, I think somebody arguing for free broadband or rent caps isn't quite the same as somebody saying that we should crush all minorities and suppress freedom of political expression. Maybe I'm strange, but I don't think those two things are equivalent. Uh, and I think people like Jeremy Vine, I think people in the mainstream media and broadcasts and, and, and radio, TV, all the way down to the people booking guests, need to have a really strong think about the kinds of people they want on. Now, that doesn't mean you constrain politically, the political complexion of people that you have as guests. I'm not suggesting that. You know, I think we, we, we should have people who think Brexit's good or wrong or liberals, conservatives, socialists, that's fine. But you, you can't have people calling for the smashing of individual people's rights. That to me is a form of political incitement that goes beyond the acceptable parameters of broadcast TV. And I think you shouldn't be allowed back on there again. I think they should apologize for it. Mm -hmm.